Vancouver. I'm James Jenkins and you're watching What's Your Story Vancouver. We're back and today we're at Casca Footwear and we're at headquarters because we had a bit of a glitch today with uh, Adesso Bistro. Then uh, um, the fire department showed up. So anyway, um, Braden Parker, uh, CEO, what's your position? Co-founder, co -founder. CEO, janitor, janitor, doer of all. Not actually all, my co-founder will kill me if I say that. Putting out fires um, as well, I'm sure. I've been trying to put out fires. <laughs> Yeah. Apparently, we, I needed to be there at the Adesso earlier today. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get right into it. Uh, maybe give me your, your backstory. Uh, I grew up in Alberta in a small town just outside Calgary called Cochrane. Um, I lived for a short stint in California and fell in love with the West Coast. Came out to UBC because it's the closest thing to California. Plus, I do a lot of uh, backcountry skiing and just never left. And don't know if I ever will. <laughs> so... That's kind of what brought me out here. I lived in Canmore for a long time. Actually. Oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. In Calgary yeah. too. Yeah. Canmore is nice. It's a good place for sure. Yeah. The mountains are just like, no matter where I be, I think I always have to be near mountains. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's kind of my backstory in terms of what brought me out here. Um, I went to school at UBC, graduated in real estate, worked in the real estate industry for an investment company for five years, and as of about three months ago, I'm now doing the shoe game full time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you went from the real estate game to the shoe game. How did, like, why did you make that leap, that jump? Um, I never really thought I was going to do something like shoes. Mm -hmm. um, one of my close friends in university, his name's Kevin, that's my current business partner. Mm -hmm. Him and I had always sort of jumped around business ideas, thrown ideas at each other. Um, at one point, I wanted to start a luxury toothbrush company with him. Thought, why don't we sell $5,000 toothbrushes? <laughs> Um, that didn't pan out. He thought it was ridiculous. And, <laughs> yeah. um, and so, uh, he came to me with this shoe idea that he had. So he, he comes from the shoe world. He used to be a designer at native. Mm -hmm. Then he was a designer at a, uh, Den, uh, company called Norse projects, uh, out of Denmark. And then he went and was the creative director at livestock. So he has a lot of shoe experience. He came to me with this idea. With, and he wanted he actually just wanted help on his business plan, mm -hmm. but we started jamming out on the business and sort of ironing out all these different details and just got along super well. Mm -hmm. So we ended up becoming partners. So this is the shoe right here. You have two different colors. You got gray and black, uh, and you have a winter and a summer. So the winter is the leather waterproof, and the summer is they got more of a mesh. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. So he came to you with an idea for with an idea. Yeah, yeah. at that point it wasn't. The, there wasn't any actual shoe yet. So he had a couple of concepts. Uh, and and he, he, he definitely is an amazing designer in terms of he wanted to bring all of the best aspects of every sort of shoe industry that he's seen. Mm -hmm. So the hiking industry, the, most, the best technology from that, and then same with the running shoe industry, the best technology from that. So we basically took the best performing technologies for these super specific purposes and said, well, why don't we create this to be sort of the ultimate everyday shoe? Um, so we took a mountaineering grade rubber, we filed a patent for this heel cup that's attached to a shank so that when you're walking, your foot actually bends in the right place. Oh, nice. Uh, and then we worked with an orthotic expert to design an orthotically correct footbed out of this really special closed celled foam that never degrades over time. Oh, wow. So the goal is, was to sort of, how do we create this, you know, three to five year shoe that performs well and that people can wear in any social setting. Mm -hmm. So the foam doesn't, he doesn't have a couple of days to like Exactly, again? it doesn't, it's not that, it's like it'll be, it'll maintain its shape mm -hmm. over a, a larger amount of time versus your traditional shoe. Mm -hmm. A lot of serious runners, they have a, a few different types of shoes, it, running shoes so they can alternate. Every, yeah, every yeah, 100%. And, and the, 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 that's sort of where, that's where that inspiration came from. Mm -hmm. That's why we decided to use this foam. Uh, and then so we, Kevin went out and Basically, we said, okay, let's go make the best shoe that we can. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it, and it was, it, it was ridiculously expensive. Uh, it would have been if we, if we didn't change our sort of business model. Mm -hmm. So we designed the perfect shoe, and then we sort of realized, okay, we're going to have to sell this shoe for $400 plus if we go through the traditional retail model. Mm -hmm. um, we heard from a lot of potential customers and did some sort of customer development interviews when we first started and heard that sort of the $200 range was this 
the sweet spot of people didn't want to pay more than sort of 230 to 240. Mm-hmm. Um, so that the only way we could hit that price point was going online direct consumer. So B2C basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So how uh, do people get a hold of you? How do people buy your shoe? So the only way you can buy them is actually on our website. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, we've been tossing around the idea of maybe doing some exclusive retail um, with other people. Pop-ups but, maybe? Yeah, yeah, we'd like to do our own pop-ups for sure. Mm-hmm. So d- direct to consumer, we kind of, online first is what we'll do. Mm-hmm. So we'll start by going online and eventually we want to do, you know, in five years it'd be amazing to have our own flagships and then have some pop-ups and maybe some movable stores. And then we also want to sort of seed our favorite marketplace with some community engagement retail mm-hmm. plans that we have. Exactly. Um, so, so if someone wants, like, do you do half sizes? Yeah, yeah. So we're doing we we're doing women's size five up to men's twelve and a half. Okay. In half sizes. Mm-hmm. Eventually, we'd like to do like if we could go up to thirteen. And we actually had someone from Germany that asked if we sold size fourteen. Oh yeah. Um, unfortunately, not. They're so the reason. Custom then, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big feet. Yeah. Unfortunately. Every single shoe size, you have to have your own metal tooling. Mm-hmm. So you, these are injected rubber. So you basically need to make sure that you have, uh, you know, it's as a startup, it's expensive to, to go in and, and create the metal tooling. Mm-hmm. So um, we had to pick a closer size range. So exactly. We tried to cover the most we could. And even doing half sizes is, I think, you know, something we're pretty proud of. Mm-hmm. Uh, fit and function is really important to us. Mm-hmm. And... If you look at some of the other online direct consumer brands out there, um, they only do full sizes. Mm-hmm. So even just doing the half sizes was sort of a you know important thing to us. That well, if you, you mentioned before the interview that uh, people can order, get it, your product, try it on. If it doesn't fit, you can they'll send it back. Yeah. So part of our part of, because we only do online, we wanted to make sure that we were making it as painless as possible mm-hmm. and not having people you know afraid to to try a shoe that they can't try on at a store. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do have free shipping, free returns. We have a thirty day guarantee. If it doesn't fit, you just send it back, mm-hmm. uh, no questions asked. And and that's also how confident we are in the product. Mm-hmm. We've like over engineered the crap out of this thing. I don't want to like the nitty gritty behind the the technology. So, so it's really really cool. All different types of foot, people's feet have more yeah, feet, yeah. high arches, low arches, that kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So we we created it to provide the most support for the most general amount of people. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you have a really crazy arch, it won't be able to replace custom orthotics, mm-hmm. but it does provide a lot more support for people that are walking day to day. Part of our hypothesis, which we sort of we feel we validated, and I think a lot of people. Um, understand is you know people are spending two hundred dollars plus on a pair of running shoes that they'll wear for ten percent of the day, mm-hmm. tops. Um, so why wouldn't they like they should be spending that much money for for more support and more performance mm-hmm. on um, on their everyday shoes? Mm-hmm. So you're walking around in a pair of Vans and you don't really have a lot of support. It's bad for your your knees, your posture. I um, love Vans and I love Chucks, but they've Definitely killed. They're my back. timeless. Don't get me wrong. I love. <laughs> they bands. definitely killed my knees and my back. I know. Yeah, and you can feel feet. it on your heels. And if you're like yeah. going to a music festival or something, you're wearing chucks all day. Like, yeah. Ah, it's like yeah, your knee. You feel like you need to sit down for a week after. Yeah. So, what are some of the biggest challenges you have faced so far um, in trying to do this? Um, it's been really stressful thinking big picture and not getting wrapped up in the day to day sort of calamities um you know sometimes you just have to we we have these sort of morning sessions where we post what we're doing and what we're working on and make sure that everybody's aligned and that we're moving forward and not sort of just always putting out fires yeah um that's that's definitely one thing uh it's also challenging just working for yourself Mm -hmm. um you know you it can be very scary when you don't have a steady income um and that's probably the biggest yeah. sort of challenge. But at the same time, it's super exciting. Who's all involved besides you, yourself and your partner? So far, it's just the two of us. Uh, we have a development studio in China that we've been working with for the past year. Uh, we worked with an orthotic expert, a pedorthic technician, I think is actually the like official term. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's an amazing guy. His name is Mark Paris. Uh, he's the third generation from Paris orthotics. Mm-hmm. So he's been making uh, orthotics and shoes for 
his whole life, as was his parents and I think his grandparents. And uh, you can actually see their the parasorthotic signs around Gastown okay. sometimes. So that's sort of where he comes from. Um, and then my youngest brother we use as a intern. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's kind of our marketing intern and intern is probably not giving enough him enough credit. Exactly. He's really doing all of our marketing. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. uh, that's been great. And then we've really utilized a lot of uh, sort of like universities and all the local institutions and gotten help from them. And then a ton of mentors. Uh, yeah. We have a lot of mentors and then um, What's some of the advice that the, the, your mentors have, have given you? Or what, what type of uh, direction, I guess? Yeah. So we have a board of advisors, which has been super helpful. That was one of the first things we did. We wanted to make sure we set ourselves up for success by trying to get as much help from the smartest people we could, we could think of. Mm -hmm. um, so Nick Bazikis is our financial advisor. Uh, he's now the VP of operations at Lush Cosmetics. Mm -hmm. And before that, he was at Aquilini Group doing some merger and acquisition stuff. Uh, and before that, he was actually the CFO of Shoes.com. Oh, okay. And, yeah. and before that, he was the CFO of Clearly Contacts. Mm -hmm. So he's a, a super, super helpful guy. Um, and then we have the chief marketing officer of Saks Underwear is our marketing advisor. So again, it's amazing. It's a really successful brand. They've been around now for yeah, a, a long time. Years, they're, maybe, and not a lot of people yeah. know they're a Vancouver brand, actually. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're really, really great. He's awesome. And before that, he was at Kit and Ace. And prior to that, he actually also worked with Nick. So they worked together okay. at Clearly Contacts, which mm -hmm. we found out after. Yeah. But it's, it's really cool to see them in the same room. They just like vibe off each other really well and aren't afraid to have differing opinions, but still move things forward. Mm -hmm. um, and then Max Feldman, who's the director of products and sourcing at Segoy Bike Apparel. Um, so he's our, uh, he's our uh, product and sourcing advisor. And he's also amazing awesome guy always he's been going to china and asia for a long time um so yeah we're lucky to have a really really good team behind us going back to the jump from real estate to the shoe game uh do you have any like there's so many people out there that want to work for themselves or want to leave their current job to start an idea or a startup or some kind of invention or mm -hmm. any advice to, like to make that leap I'd say you have to make sure that you're, you've set everything up the right way. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure that you know you have a a plan for how are you going to live. You don't want to like take on credit card debt. Like you need to make sure you've sort of prepared for it. Mm -hmm. um, I was lucky in that I had saved up money and and was able to to kind of be prepared for that um, and. And then it's really just like remembering how short life is, you mm -hmm. know, like you got to go for you it. You got to go for it. And, and at our age too, or like, like I don't have a family, I don't have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of ask myself like, what is the worst case scenario that, that is going to happen? And am I going to look back at my life, you know, when I'm 40 and be like, oh, I'm an idiot. I really wish that I just tried that shoe company. Exactly. Um, and 40 is still young now, too. You can still yeah, do it. Yeah, that's a good point. I know. Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. Even you're right. when you're 80, say 40. Like, oh, like, like, <laughs> when you're an elderly, uh, 80 or 90, I'm like, oh, you don't want regrets probably the biggest killer, the biggest yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. sting to anyone. So, well, yeah, yeah, and life's short. So I don't know. I think just do it and then jump in with both feet. And um, yeah. yeah, it was the best leap that I've done and I haven't really looked back since and well it seems like you're doing everything right so you set yourself up for success as far as getting your advisory board and partner up partnering up with you know someone that knows what they're doing <laughs> mm -hmm. and then you already have your like your business background education yeah stuff, we've right? been super super lucky and we've done all we can to sort of put ourselves in that place mm -hmm. so it's been really exciting we launched only a month ago uh, we've done about 26,000 in pre-orders to date well wow. Um, we're delivering the product in the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, we're speaking at a trade show in Las Vegas in mid-August. What's the name of the trade show? It's called Magic. Magic? Okay. Yeah, Magic Sourcing is the one that we're at. I think there, there's a bunch of different ones. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just there talking about you know our experience being a startup and going to China and finding factories and mm -hmm. finding a studio and, and going through the process of sort of the creation of this. Exactly. Um, so that's super exciting. and. And we're kind of in this, you know, this fun zone of um, just getting the word out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm the most excited to 
I'll, have, I'll know that it'll have been a success when A, I'm paying myself a salary. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be nice. Uh, and then be seeing someone I don't know wearing our shoes on the street. That'd be the biggest. Yeah, uh, for me, I think the, that'll be the biggest. What are you reading right now or any podcast? Do you listen to any podcasts? Um, I listen to more audio books. Yeah. Uh, so I'm listening to the audio book called Multipliers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole sort of premise behind that is that uh, how do you empower other people to sort of inspire and create and, you know, instead of being someone who's going to manage someone and not empower them and not let them go and take responsibility to do stuff, mm-hmm. you're, you're losing that person's brain and, and how do you treat, how do you create this multiplier effect by being a good manager? Mm-hmm. Not that we have a team that we're managing, but trying <laughs> exactly. to be proactive. <laughs> yeah. So you have the summer and the winter, like, so. Yeah, so not even actually summer, winter. Yeah. We actually designed these to be um, like a timeless silhouette that could work. So we actually based it on climate. Yeah, rain um, shine basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we this would be the hot dry, and then the the wet cold is the 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 black and the gray leather. Yeah, it's definitely a little more weight to it as well. Yeah, right? it's a little heavier, to, and yeah. that just comes from the leather. It's a super yeah. high quality waterproof leather. Mm-hmm. Uh, we designed it for Vancouver. Originally, we were you know we wanted it to be waterproof. So there's a gusseted tongue so that water won't drip in around your foot, mm-hmm. um, and the the leather itself is really breathable. Uh, even still, like we use this, Kevin will kill me. I can't, I'm not the best at describing it, <laughs> okay. but we basically, it's like a, a wash or something that doesn't actually clog the pores of the leather. So it can remain breathable, but still be waterproof. Okay. Um, so I'm excited to, yeah, for people to be, we'll be delivering in the fall. So mm. thank you to all our friends who bought the net. However, <laughs> the, uh, the leather will be a little more helpful. Um, yeah. That's great that your partner had worked at these big companies prior, and then he, he kind of got all that knowledge and was able to put it in, into his own his own shoe. For sure. That's uh, yeah. No, he's he's done like a phenomenal, phenomenal job. He's a super, super talented guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so so lucky to you know to have to be involved in the process with him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. What's your plans for the, the future after you launch and, and get going? I'd say a couple years from now, or any mm-hmm. like. Future the goal, like the future goal is to, we want to create, in terms of the product, we want to create, so we created this to be, like I said, sort of this timeless silhouette. So how do we, we sort of envision it being like the Patagonia fleece or the Levi's 501. Mm-hmm. Um, it'll look just as good in 10 years as it does now. So we want to do the same thing to every silhouette. So this is the sneaker. We want to do a similar thing to um, a slip-on, a desert boot, uh, an Oxford, a high top and I think that's it mm-hmm. that's and then, yeah, then the sneaker it's quite the line though yeah, yeah. but also mean, like keeping it super simple like yeah. we don't want to be a company that's pushing out you know 15 different styles and 30 different colors each and have huge like inventory problems and skews yeah. like we want to be really really focused in everything that we do mm-hmm. um, keep it simple keep stupid. it simple yeah exactly <laughs> keep it simple stupid yes. that's yeah. right yeah exactly how did you come up with uh, the name Casca? The real story is Kevin, uh, design guy, mm-hmm. likes, he went through the entire alphabet and sort of picked his favorite letters and, uh, and likes symmetry. So he went in and, and likes, he was like, oh, I like C-A-S-C-A. And then he likes Casca because it's, it's symmetrical. So the C, the A, and then the S is kind of a symmetrical letter type. And then mm-hmm. the C and the A. So he designed it to be symmetrical. So. He does that, uh, comes, tells me that, oh, I figured out her name, like, Casca. And then it's like, Kevin, we cannot, we need a better story than calling it Casca <laughs> because you like symmetry. Well, the shoe is but, symmetrical. You know what I mean? The shoe it's, is it's symmetrical. Very, uh, we ended up, so we nice kind lines. of, the, the, the fast story that we'll tell people is, it's, mm-hmm. which is also true. So we mm-hmm. then were like, hey, wait a minute, Cascadia, the Cascades. Mm-hmm. So it's also play now on Casca, the Cascades. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin likes the symmetry. I love the mountains and mm-hmm. spend a lot of time outdoors. So I like to say the Cascades. Kevin would probably like to say the symmetry. So going back to the design, you actually have a patent on, on the heel, like a, the reinforced... Um, yeah, yeah. So on the heel cup, it's a heel, yeah, the cup, the heel yeah. cup, which then goes kind of around and then under the heel to about here and then goes up to about here. Mm-hmm. And then that just, again, causes you to walk in the right, your foot flexes at the right point. Exactly. 
Did you go the whole the whole investor route? Um, not yet. Well, that's what we're actually doing now. Okay. Um, we bootstrapped it as long as we could. We wanted to make sure that we were doing things right. I'm a huge mm -hmm. fan of this book called The Lean Startup, uh, which is kind of the idea that you should be, you know, test and then validate and test and validate. Exactly. So we wanted to make sure that we were, um, you know, can we, would customers pay $200 for a pair of shoes like this? Mm -hmm. So we did a bunch of different research to figure out that like, yes, if we could deliver a shoe like this, they would pay the $200. Exactly. Um, so we did a lot of that uh, and bootstrapped it, bootstrapped going to China. And then we did a friends and family raise of $200,000 uh, about a month ago. Mm -hmm. And now we're in talks with a few different groups about raising, you know, sort of one and a half to two million mm -hmm. uh, to fundraise future growth and allow us to put in an actually like a larger order. Um, well, you are, you're already making money, basically. You had pre-orders. Yeah, yeah, we have so pre-orders for sure. Yeah. The hard part is uh, really inventory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we put in, we, we took money from friends and family, bought 1,200 shoes. We'll sell through all those shoes and your, the profit that you have left won't allow us to buy, say, 2,400 shoes. Mm -hmm. um, it'll, it, it doesn't work that, that way. Um, so it's actually funny. The book Shoe Dog from Phil Knight um, I read before we started this company and I'm listening to that again. Mm -hmm. And the part that I'm at is actually his whole, the cash flow issues that he had with his inventory. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of a funny circle of, of inventory cash flow that's going on. Well, speaking of funny stories, uh, what you have a story about some a patent or a, the, 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 the domain name? The What's, domain name? Yeah. yeah. So we bought Casca.co and realized that we were going to be doing online only. So kind of said, okay, this is not going to work. How do we buy Casca.com? Did some research, found this guy in Russia who bought it in like 1998 and sent an email to this random email. And a few days later we hear back and he wants 10 grand for it. Wow. So we're like, okay, this is not going to work. We have zero yeah. money right now. I don't know how we're going to be able to give anybody 10 grand for a domain name. So we negotiated with him and um, basically said like, look, we have no money. We're, you know, trying to do this. We said it was a project, which isn't a lie. And we said we're students, which is also true. We're students of, you know, I was a student of figuring out shoes. Mm -hmm. um, and so we negotiated him down to 1450 US. Uh, which was about $2,000 Canadian. Mm -hmm. um, and there was this crazy scary time where we used escrow.com. So you put the money in, he puts the domain name in, and once the transfer happens, then the escrow, through, yeah. exactly, escrow so. will release the funds. Um, and so there's this time of three days where the money had left, mm -hmm. but the domain name hadn't transferred. And so I was just like hands between my, uh, head between my legs, just like, oh my gosh, like this is our, like, we're yeah. trying to start a business and this is the first thing that happens. We have yeah. no, like we've lost $2,000 and we have no domain name. Mm -hmm. um, but then it went through and it was honestly the, the best investment. Being able to say like casco.com and give your email out. And it, it, I think it's a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, de it was worth every penny, but it was a stressful few days. What kind of pastime? What's your favorite pastime in Vancouver? What oh, do you God. love about Vancouver? I love everything about Vancouver. Mm -hmm. um, I love the snow. I spend a lot of time up in Whistler. Uh, I spend a lot of time rock climbing in Squamish. I'm a big fan of mountain biking. Uh, I like surfing on the island. Mm -hmm. Running the seawall is a huge de-stressor for me. That helps me out. I'd probably be crazy without that. Uh, and then I also do the grouse grind with some buddies once a week. Mm -hmm. Did in Vancouver inspire the, the shoe at all? You said obviously it's waterproof. And yeah, yeah, no, in Vancouver, it, it so. fully, it fully did. It absolutely yeah. did. Vancouver is such an incredible. It, it, there's such an incredible lifestyle here. You look mm -hmm. at all the other, I, you look at all the other brands that come out of Vancouver. You have Arcteryx, Lululemon, uh, Max Head Office is here, Aritzia is here, Herschel, Lush, Lush Sachs. Uh, yeah, Sachs. <laughs> The list is huge. Right it's now. crazy. People yeah. don't realize that. Yeah, I know, and I think it's because we have this lifestyle, and a lot of those brands are all life, like these kind of like active lifestyle technical brands, because you need something that can put up with the abuse that the environment and that we put on him. Mm -hmm. So that really inspired us. That's why we made sure that we had you know a really really strong durable sole, mm -hmm. and we're using a waterproof leather, and we're using sort of the best knit structure. 
Mm -hmm. uh, we needed a, a shoe that could keep up with our busy lives. Mm -hmm. So almost like a commuter, you can, you know, the city streets or you know, the, the trail or go yeah. off road a bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> exactly. Like, that's I mean, that's yeah. fully right. Yeah, you can yeah. bike in it. You can do anything. Exactly. Slip them it's on. Fully functional. Uh, yeah. Slash between like a street shoe and athletic. Yeah, and and also yeah. hopefully a shoe that people feel they can wear in any social setting because yeah. you, you know that's the other thing is people to have business meetings and you still people are still doing really you know vancouver is a very driven and, and hard-working place so we also wanted to make sure that it could keep up with people's sort of careers exactly mm -hmm. so how can people find your shoe you said online orders and you will actually they can try it on and uh, send it back if need be um anything else about that you can let us yeah know. no free shipping free returns if it doesn't work out send it back uh, North America wide, um, and we have some people that have bought globally. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we don't have the sort of infrastructure set up for the free shipping and returns, but uh, still well shipped globally. Mm. All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Braden. I really appreciate it. The long table, I want to give you a hand. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, the, it's Casca. Um, on Instagram is Casca. Casca.com. Casca. Oh, Casca.co on Instagram. Casca.co on Instagram. Yeah. That's Casca.com on a website. Uh, all their links and stuff will be in the description below. And again, thank you so much uh, for watching. And please, if you found value in this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. What's your story, Vancouver? Our city, our stories. <laughs>